<laughs> All right, so um, Carlos and I had been very busy, oh, yeah. and uh, uh, I was able to get uh, Commander Werewolf painted. I still want to put like a flat or matte clear coat, um, and uh, Carlos is kind of in the middle stage of the painting, right? Yeah. But I just really quick, I, I didn't really want to reveal it yet. I want to kind of save that till we're both done. I'm excited for you guys to see it. <laughs> but it's really, I, sorry not to cut you off. I just no, real yeah. quick kind of wanted to show you, you know, these are the paints I used, I used the primers um, to get the colors I wanted, and then acrylic paints I used uh, white and kind of a reddish brown and a, and a beige, and just kind of like mixed it up on the plate and used the brush. I just kind of used this brush. Um, the reason why I'm just kind of pointing this out is because we got so busy last night that we didn't film the painting of, of uh, Commander Werewolf. And then just a quick, um, using a sponge just to do a uh, kind of a light texture over. And so just that, just kind of a little quick little you yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna wait till the end so we can really show um, how that turned out. And Carlos, you wanna talk what paints you've used so yeah, far? Yeah, so far. So, so far I've used, oh, sorry, I, can't. I use this as a base coat for Frankenstein and we do want to give him kind of that like I mean, rotten fresh yeah. flesh look. So once, once this fully dried and I had a full even coat, we missed it on some little, a little bit of a lighter green from Tamiya paint. Um, just very lightly. And then we kind of highlighted a little bit more like on the cheek areas, you know, Frankenstein has really bulging cheekbones, yeah, you know, yeah. so, and now I'm using, you know, the same, essentially the same method for your fur. Yeah. Um, I'm painting, I'm using black acrylic for the hair and then I'm going to lightly go on with a little bit, you know, lighter wash down version to kind of like highlight, get, it. highlight the hair. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. So, uh, while Carlos continues painting, I'm going to go ahead and jump on to this one. Now, what did we decide to call this one? Uh, so, so far the name we've gotten, uh, come up with is uh, the 212th Halloween Specialist. Halloween Specialist, there we go. So, I'm gonna get started on this one uh, while you continue, and then uh, hopefully we can knock these all out today, or see how many we can get yeah. done today, and, and then we'll do a reveal uh, photo of all of them uh, at, at the end. All right, so I sketched out the idea to kind of make this look like a pumpkin. You know, it is tricky with the different angles. Um, so kind of happy with the layout. I'm not trying to make it symmetrical. I want to, you know, pumpkin is not totally symmetrical, but it's the lines do fall in similar places on each side. Uh, so now I've got to actually execute the build up to create that kind of bulge um, striping that like a pumpkin has. Um, and then I'm also going to cut the mohawk and bend it and use epoxy to kind of make that look like the stem uh, of a pumpkin. So that's what I'm working on now. As I mentioned before, I was going to use the pink base. Uh, I'm kind of building it up in the center and then spreading it a little bit thinner where my orange uh, tape is because I'm going to peel up that orange tape and that'll be the lower uh, section of the ribbing to the pumpkin. Right, so uh, I've been using, gosh, I don't even know, I think it's like 40 grit, really aggressive stuff uh, to kind of help shape and also using a uh, sanding uh, wheel on the Dremel to kind of really get down in there. Um, so I blew this all off and I could see a lot of the pinholes and I'm gonna be using uh, spot glaze putty uh, to help fill this all in and really give that nice round curve uh, like a pumpkin has. So right now uh, what I'm doing is I'm utilizing a dark flesh uh, ink tone that like it's, it's very, it's got the consistency of ink. But what I'm doing is I'm essentially giving that layered effect of skin you know right here it's two pieces glued together i want the forehead to look like it's separating a little bit more so you know and i wanted the the cut to get have a little bit of depth hence why i added that little red line to give it that you know that extra little touch okay so i want the top of the mohawk to represent the stem of the pumpkin so i've cut that off and i've just added a piece of mdf wood in there and for reinforcement and I'm going to be putting that in like that 
basically. So I'm gonna just do a little CA glue. So I know there's a lot of weird gap and stuff, um, but I'm actually gonna be using um, putty and filling that in and shaping this and giving this more of the, the grooves and you know more like a spine to a, a pumpkin, but um, that's kind of the start to the stem. done with Frankenrex so right now what I'm doing is rusting up his antenna a little bit more so what I did was I based it with a gunmetal color then dry brushed it with a silver and then I used the flesh ink tone to kind of fill in all the little pits and then give it that slight brown brownish reddish rust color so now that the rangefinder is installed uh, we also installed the aerators on the bolts with the bolts we decided to flip them backwards to give it more of a Frankenstein look. Cause you know, when you see Frankenstein, the bolts in his neck really stick out. So we wanted to give that look as well. All right, I think, you know what? I think Captain Frankenrex is good to go. What do you think? Dude, that is you dig so it? Oh yeah. I, you know what? I'm pretty proud of it. Let me showcase it off a little bit. So <laughs> what do you guys think? That is super cool. Captain Frankenrex, you also finished Commander Werewolf, I, right? I have, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's, uh... That, I like. That is really cool. I really like what you did with the hair. The textured fur, you added the nose, the teeth. Yeah. That is amazing. I, I'm excited about that one as well. I'm, I'm, you know, midway through on this one now, you know, I was just kind of making sure. Yeah. Uh, Starting to look like a pumpkin. Gotta let the primer dry a little bit more. I think I'm ready to yeah start throwing on the orange tones, um, you know the uh, greenish kind of brown tones for the stem there. So yeah, try to get this done. Um, but I'm I'm really excited that you know in two yeah. days. Oh yeah. Uh, we've knocked out these. I mean this this will be done. You know just a few hours. Uh, just gotta wait for it to cure a little more. Um, but I feel like maybe the jet to lantern and the blue katan. Maybe we save that for like, you know, maybe next week or, or yeah, later yeah. or something, but... Um, I don't think we anticipated adding this much detail to like all our work, you know? Well, no, I mean, originally we were planning just doing two helmets. You know? Correct, And it was yeah. going to be like this one and one other one. And then we threw this into the mix, so this kind of got sidetracked and kind of off to the we side. We started and, um, this guy too. And but dude, I mean, look at these two together here just for a minute. Let's... Uh, I mean, we still have the visors we got to put in, so they're not quite finished. But I'm gonna say I'm pretty proud of what we did in two days. Uh, like I said, we'll get the uh, final uh, pieces done. We'll show you, but uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, following us on this crazy uh... two-day adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thank All right. you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Okay, so I've gone ahead and painted the uh, helmet using the first um, the real orange gloss and then I put a real good coat you know misted on got a tack coat put a really good coat all the way around and then I did a nice uh, kind of medium coat almost a lot more towards a light coat of the rustic orange and I really focused on the lower areas uh, with this one and then um, I actually used the sun yellow I misted it on really far away to get like kind of like a speckle effect around because a pumpkin isn't like a solid orange. And then I did the same thing with the uh, nutmeg, again, just misting it on all the way around. And then I went back over and did a mist of this everywhere to kind of tone down some of the yellow and the brown. And then I went back with the real orange and I just sprayed that on the raised sections of the ribs to get that to pop and get kind of that highlight so that's the first step in painting it. Um, now I'm going to go with wash and, and other colors to really, uh, well, I got to paint the stem and uh, I want to kind of age and, and weather uh, the helmet so it's a cross between the pumpkin and a uh, battle-worn clone helmet. I'm going to move on to the stem while that dries and I've actually just sprayed um, some Rust-Oleum into a cup and kind of let that dissipate and also some black. Um, I I don't really have a good acrylic uh, green that I want to use, so that's why I'm going to just be using uh, the rest of them. But the trick is to spray it into a cup and let it um, kind of dry out for a little bit. And then I can 
and brush this on. So that's just a good um, base coat with the green. I'll go over, like I said, darkening it uh, with a uh, darker tone of green and some blacks and some of the uh, beige. And again, that's very speckled. Um, when, or at least that's what I've studied from a, a real pumpkin stem. I'll keep working on this and show you the progress. All right, so I ended up using a lot of different, uh, like a hunter green as well as, oh, what was this one again, I forgot, uh, moss green with black and then I even kind of went over with a little bit of the um, kind of ivory um, acrylic and using sponges and different brushes uh, for the stem. So I'm um, really pleased with how that's turning out. See that there. So I'm gonna go back and uh, add more wash to this that that's dried during that time let that dry go here so just kind of keep working back and forth again kind of the same thing uh just uh adding a little bit of water to my plate here and still i'm just gonna be mixing the brown and black acrylic and applying that on in the same way i was just showing and just getting a little more aggressive with the tone and a little bit less water to really build that up